Hello everyone and welcome to this session 360 degrees WAP protection for open banking. What we will cover today is some basic information on open banking, its technical requirements, security challenges and what F5 can do to meet these requirements. There will be a few short demos throughout this presentation, but I'm hoping you will take some time to check the lab we published in UDF that is used as demo environment for today's session. So let's start. First, what is open banking? Simply put, it's a standardized way to expose financial APIs. The keyword here is standardized as there were many other financial APIs made available before open banking came along. But they are not following any particular standard, so integration with a large set of financial institutions, each having a different way to interact, was a real challenge. Getting financial institutions to adopt such a standard took some regulatory pressure in the form of laws such as the Second Payment Services Directive, a PSD2 in EU and Consumer Data Rights CDR in Australia. The thing to note here is these are just pieces of legislation, um, fairly light on the technical side, so it was up to some implementing bodies to devise the actual technical standards. Some of these bodies are national, like in the case of Australia, where the Treasury's data standards body is in charge of creating these standards. In the case of the EU, where PSD2 affects a lot more countries, um, some of them banded together and the result was the emergence of international organizations like the Berlin Group um, or STAT, uh, beside uh, national organizations like Open Banking Implementation Entity in the UK. As open banking initiatives gather pace around the world, some countries may choose to adopt one of the existing standards instead of creating new ones. At the core of the open banking concept is the third party financial provider, TPP, which is an organization that provides financial services to end users. Think money management, insurance selection advice and payments. So the TPP interacts with the end user's bank to gather account information or make financial transactions on its behalf. For that, the TPP needs the end user's permission. So the end user will have to log in to their bank, obtain an access token, securely transmit it to the TPP that will use it to perform the API calls. I can demo this flow very quickly by logging in to a TPP payments application that has access to a number of demo banking accounts. I will go and create a transaction, select from which account I want to transfer funds, and fill in the rest of the form fields. Now the TPP needs my permission to execute the transaction, so I'll be redirected to my bank, uh, log into a OAuth authorization server and give my consent for TPP to perform the payment operation. Once I give my consent, I will be redirected back to the TPP application along with an authorization code that the TPP will exchange for a real access token and then it will perform the actual transaction. All this operation being done in the background, uh, I will be redirected to my account page and I can check the status of this transaction. One may wonder what is the use of open banking since I had to log into my bank anyway, couldn't I just perform the transaction myself? Well, the power of open banking can be demonstrated by performing a second transaction, where the user no longer has to give his her consent as the OAuth access token is already cached by the TPP 
which is great since we have to remember making banking tra transaction operations more straightforward is one of the open banking goals. As I already hinted, the bedrock of open banking specifications is OAuth, which implements the access token mechanism. On top of which, OpenID Connect is used to transmit end user information through another similar token. There is an additional layer of standards named um, Financial Grade API, FAPI, that can be thought of in a couple of ways. First, as a narrowing down on the list of protocols supported by OAuth, OIDC, to only the most secure ones. And second, as extra specifications to address weaknesses of basic OAuth OIDC. Uh, here it's worth mentioning the concern for access token leakage, where an attacker gets hold of this token and can perform all the actions permitted by it. So to mitigate this threat, uh, FAPI prescribes the usage of sender constrained tokens, where MTLS is used between TPP and the bank's OAuth authorization server, um, and the client SSL cert is hashed and add it to the access token. Anyone that tries to use the access token has to present the same client SSL cer certificate used to generate it. So this ensures that only the original TPP can use that token. Even if FAPI addresses most of the concerns related to high risk transactions, not even that set of standards goes so far into prescribe an actual reference architecture. Security elements like WAF, the DOS protection and bot management being left out and onto each bank's discretion. From the bank's perspective, open banking means opening a door to its core business. So risks are very high, therefore protection measures such as WAF or bot management solutions will always be present in the actual deployment. How can F5 help? There are several areas where F5 can help secure open banking APIs. First, our Nginx API gateway is ideal for the role of an OAuth resource server performing the OAuth access token authentication and client authorization. Its small footprint is perfect for modern environments where micro gateways are required to be deployed on container platforms and integrated into CICD tools. The big differentiator is the ability to have the WAF in the form of Nginx Subprotect WAF and DOS, prote DOS protection solution in the form of Nginx Aprotec DOS, co-located on the same Nginx micro gateway. NAP WAF can precisely identify the difference between a valid and a malicious API call as it can ingest the open banking open API spec file. NAP DOS allows for a hands-off machine learning driven configuration of signatures matching DOS attackers resulting in a very small overhead. I will quickly demo a scenario where an attacker is exploiting a weakness in the TPP application software. I will initiate a new transaction, but this time I will take advantage of an unsanitized input field to send a simple cross-site scripting attack, selecting here just for demo purposes. You can see an AP WAF located on the API gateway uh, blocking this attempt. In this blueprint, we are using GitLab as a repository for Nginx configuration. You can see here the Nginx config file and the NAP WAF and DOS sections. Examining the NAP WAF policy, you can see that it loads the Open Banking Open API specification also hosted on GitLab. Lastly, we are using a GitLab CI/CD pipeline to automatically deploy the backend open banking application and the Nginx instance. 
To perform the authentication and the authorization function, Nginx API Gateway is using an NGS script that extracts the client SSL certificate, hashes it, and then checks it against the value stored in the access token. Additional checks are being performed to ensure the required scopes are included in the access token. So far, we've explored the data plane protections F5 can offer, but there's another area where F5 can make a difference. Protecting the OAuth authorization server, OIDC IDP, itself against malicious bots. This server presents a login form that can be abused through credential staffing or brute force attacks launched from bot networks, so it is important to protect against bot access. The use case is some, somehow simpler as we don't expect good bots to access this page, so the bot management function is simplified. simplified. We are interested in allowing only humans to access it and block everything else. One solution would be to leverage on-prem big IP devices and use uh, Shape's first self-service offering, integrated bot defense. The main advantage of this solution is the ease of deployment and simple configuration from IAP. I will demo this scenario using OpenBullet 2, a tool used for brute force and credential staffing attacks. OpenBullet has, uh, has been provided with a word list containing three sets of credentials, one of them being valid, simulating a, a credential staffing attack. The configuration of OpenBullet has been customized for this particular OAuth server and is capable of bypassing the security measures native to the page. Running the script through an unprotected virtual server shows OpenBullet identifying the one valid set of credentials. Attempting the same attack against the IBD protected virtual server results in zero hits all three attempts being identified as bots and blocked by IBD. We can check this by logging into the F5 Cloud Services console and examining the dashboard. Wrapping up, in this session, uh, we explore the fundamentals of open banking, the security challenges and the areas where F5 can enhance the security posture. We are seeing an increase in, in the interest for open banking adoption, even in countries that are not subject to laws such as PSD2 and CDR. So there will be more and more opportunities to position F5 security offerings for such use cases. With that said, thank you for your attention. And if you have any additional questions, please contact me directly.